When I feel embarrassment, my inner child emerges and I just feel like a child. I think it happens to other people as well, not just me. Even people that you wouldn't expect it to happen to. I once saw embarrassment transform the scariest man in the world into the most scared little boy right before my eyes. I was in Sydney. I was walking down King's Cross after a comedy show. It was about 10 o'clock at night. I was walking along and I saw a guy walking towards me on the footpath and from about 20 metres away, I thought to myself, probably don't look at him for too long. (laughs) You know those people? You just go, oh yeah, maybe I won't look at him for very long, I reckon. (laughs) He was scary. Not in an unhinged way, in like a calm, confident way. He was mid-50s, shaved head, nice expensive clothes, like rings and tattoos on the back of his hands. And he's just walking, he's just holding the footpath and he's walking in a way that says, don't look at me. The problem with people like that is I, I kind of find them really interesting. You know, like I'm, I'm curious about them. I'm like, why are you so scary? What is scary about you? So I looked at him for too long. Um, <laughs> And I knew I'd looked for too long. I-, I looked at him for a while, he looked at me for a while, and I went, yep, that was too long, for sure. <laughs> so then, obviously, I just go head down, don't I? Just submissive, straight away, you win the little looking battle. I'm, I'm not a threat to you at all. You're the alpha in this dynamic. <laughs> That's totally fine. I'm walking towards him. I'm a-, a little bit nervous. I'm remembering, like, bits of advice I've gotten over the years. Don't cross the road, that shows fear. I'm ready to call the cops, tell them there's an officer down if need be. <laughs> I get to about four metres from him and I couldn't help it. I wanted to see what he looked like up close. I thought, no one's ever been hurt over a squiz, have they? I'll just, I'll give him a squiz, it'll be fine. So four metres out, I just gave him a harmless squiz, I just went like that, that's fine. No harm in that. All good. (laughs) He was ready for my squiz. He was waiting for me to give him a squiz. He matched my squiz with the coldest fucking stare. I can't describe it. This man stared into my soul. My blood went cold. I didn't know that was a real feeling that you could feel. I've read characters in books and shit. They're like, they felt their blood go cold. That happened to me straight away. I don't know. It's so hard to convey how scary this guy was. Um, This might give you an idea. I did this show earlier this year, this exact show that you're seeing me do right now. I did it in Sydney um, and I didn't tell this story. Does that kind of give you an idea? Like, I don't reckon he's a comedy fan, but I'm just not going to risk it, you know? Just steer clear of that. Like, when I told... the guy, I was staying with a friend in Sydney, and when I got back there on this night when this happened, I told him about it. He said to me, he was like, do you reckon this guy's ever killed anyone? I said, I don't reckon. I know he has. That's the kind of man we're dealing with, right? So he stared at me like that. But then... He spat, right? He spat at the ground. Tough men do this sometimes. He went like that. But the spit didn't fully disconnect from his mouth. It swung around and attached itself to his chin and everything changed. Just like that, he became a scared little boy. I wanted to wipe his chin for him. He was blushing. It's weird to see a murderer blush, you know what I mean? (laughs) 